Hello and welcome to this video about rectifier diode system responses or the equation that finds the rectifier diode Laplace transform. If we consider the conduction zones of the diodes in a bridge rectifier we can see that they look like these coloured zones here and the resistance of these diodes will switch to a high value outside these zones and low value inside them. This is what the resistance of the first type of diode in the bridge rectifier looks like as a function of time, being very high most of the time and dropping to a low value during the first conduction zone. This diode can also double up for the diode in the halfway rectifier. So this is what the second type of diode's time dependent resistance looks like which is like the first diodes, but time shifted by about half a cycle. Now to find the value of the Laplace transform for the first diode. It is really just a train of pulses and can be calculated to be this. First of all, it is a train of pulses with height RL and width A, and periodicity T, and time shifted by B, and because they are thin rectangles subtracted from an otherwise high resistance, we'll subtract this value from 1 over S. Collecting these terms together firstly gives us this equation. So this is the final equation which looks messy to work with. Now to find a Laplacian for the second diode. Its resistance looks like this green function. It looks just like the equation for the first diode, only time shifted by half the period T. So here's a list of all the Laplacian equations for all of the circuit elements. This is how you would solve a circuit using the Laplace transform and using a matrix. You would firstly select a good range of values of S being close to 1 so they wouldn't get too large or small. Here is a good example if we were to use only three values. To solve a complicated circuit might need 50. Then you'd look up the next element in a file that contained all of the elements that went into this circuit. For example, if the next element was a capacitor, you'd use the Laplacian of a capacitor which is this function here. Since the circuit matrix is made up of the inverse of resistance, then the inverse or the reciprocal of this value needs to be found, which is this. So you'd calculate what looks like a row vector containing this function applied to each value of S. The circuit program would then look up the value of the capacitance corresponding to this particular capacitor in this circuit. Then all of the values would be substituted into this row vector. And this is what this row vector is after it has been evaluated. And so this row vector is placed in this position in the circuit solving matrix. It would have to be placed in this matrix again either two or four times in different positions and with different signs. Then after placing all of the values for all of these circuit elements into the matrix, we'd end up with a matrix that looks something like this. Notice that the voltage source would have a value in the voltage column and ones, zeros and minus ones in the rest of the row. This corresponds to how a voltage source would look in a circuit matrix. Then you'd reduce this matrix to a form that looks like this, where three ones in a row would be the identity element. So this is a sort of identity matrix in this case. The output voltage would correspond to these three numbers circled in red. You would then have to convert these numbers to a ratio of two polynomials like this. Then you would have to convert it into a form of equation like this that you could easily use the inverse Laplace transform on. 
Then, after applying the inverse Laplace transform, you'd get an equation that looks like this. Notice that the amount A0 would have to be very large compared to the rest of the coefficients to show that it has good rectifier behaviour. I did try to make a circuit solving program using Laplacian functions, but it didn't lend itself to computer manipulation very easily. I tried to store the function as a list of sampled values, but it didn't work well for the circuits containing diodes. So I just wanted to show it to you, and you might like to try it on a computer that's a bit more friendly towards this kind of analysis. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and I wish you all the best in your quest to study this sort of circuit analysis. And please click the subscribe button.